Hello again, Centurion Faith. I took a moment to try to adjust the lighting on my screen. It seems hazed out and too bright. I'm not sure what it's all about. I can't get it to change, but I'm glad I did because the microphone seemed a little hot. So I hope the sound is a little better. If not, please let me know. Um, we're going to hop over from the Psalms. We were in Psalms 139 and we we're in Psalms 140 and we're going over to 2 Corinthians starting just at the end of chapter 2, verse 14. This is the victory in Christ. Now, thanks be unto God, which always causes us to triumph in Christ. Our triumph is in Christ and maketh manifest the savor of his knowledge by us in every place. It is us. We are what goes out. We are the savor of his knowledge. So by you being knowledgeable of your scripture, you will be knowledgeable to other people. Even if you don't have the confidence, the Lord is going to put you in situations to talk about the Lord Jesus Christ. You'll find yourself with the scriptures that you learn to speak with. And a lot of times you won't know what to do with those scriptures until you find yourself in a place with somebody on a bus stop, on the way there, uh, in the store, walking down an aisle, talking to a clerk. There's so many opportunities we have in life to just say, hey, brother, do you know about my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ? If they don't, you have a moment to speak. And if they do, then praise the Lord. I have a brother and sister. They get the confirmation that they're not alone in the world. And you know that you're not alone in the world for our father and our God, our, the Son, he will not leave us alone nor forsake us. The Lord Jesus Christ is always with us, ready to intercess and take us as we are and make us better. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. For we are unto God a sweet savor of Christ in them that are saved and them that perish. To one, we are the savor of death unto death, and to the other, the savor of life unto life. And who is sufficient for these things? We are sufficient through Christ. For some we are the savor of death unto death, and to others the savor of life unto life. That is how important we are to have the word of God, God in our heart, guarding over our mind and directing our steps, because he will set people in our path to speak to. Some bless us by coming, and some bless us by going. The Lord will help us discern through his word how to balance this in our life. Amen? For we are not as many which corrupt the word. We are not as many as corrupt the word. There's more. There is more out there. And you can watch it on TV. There's more out there that are corrupting the word of God. This is the false doctrines. These are the false ideas. The runoff with the history channels and this and that and all the weird events going on in the world. This is what's real right here. Everything else will pass away, but the word of God will stand. And for we are not as many which corrupt the word of God, but as of sincerity. Our love for God is to be in sincerity. That's a high vibration to have is sincerity. He doesn't want us in a falsehood. He doesn't want us falsely humble. He doesn't want us overly proud. He doesn't want us overly religious. He wants us as we are so he can work with us to be who he wants us to be. Not them, they, those, or whatever we might get in our mind, the personas we have of other people or even ourselves. But he wants us to be who he wants us to be by the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and the word of our testimony and the word of his truth. And now hopping over into 2 Corinthians 3, verse 1. Do we begin again to commend ourselves or need we as some other epistles of the commendation to you or a letter of con con condemnation uh, from, from you. It's, it's saying that we don't have to applaud each other. We don't have to just, oh, butter each other up. We have to be who we are in Christ. We can only do what we can do. Oh, Popeye said, I am what I am. So did the Lord. He is who he is, and he expects us to be who we are. We can't be more than we are. We can't be less than we are. We have to be what the Lord wants us to be. And he starts out with us not perfect, but in his love, in his teachings, in his will, he will make us perfect. We don't have to worry about the shortcomings that we have. We have to worry about only what the Lord puts in front of us. And all he says is not to worry at all. He will take all those things. He will mend our hearts. He will mend our minds. He will set our path for us. Worry is wasteful. Not a, not a bit of worry will ever gain anyone's stature is what the Bible says. The only things we have to contend with ourselves ourselves even the enemy when we come to the realization of our authority in christ the enemy has to stand back in the name of jesus 
He has to move away in the name of Jesus. We can't just let the world overcome us. It's, it's as simple as the enemy whispers to our minds and says, it's not so. And we believe it like it's not so? No. You have to take control of those wicked imaginations and say, get thou behind me, Satan. I'm not listening to that. And if, if you have to speak it out loud to make it happen, speak your verbal words in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ against what comes against you in your head and watch it get silent. Watch it get a little further away. Watch a little more distance between the enemy and you. And it all starts with having our confidence and our comfort in Christ and knowing that we already have victory. We have victory in the word of God. We have victory in the word of God, and he wants us to be more than overcomers. He loves us. This is what he wants for us. Now, let's just hop over. We are going to go to 2 Corinthians, right here, and 3.17, 2 Corinthians 3.17. Now the Lord is that spirit, and where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Now, I want you to suck that in for a second. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Now, the Lord is that Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. But we all, with the open face beholding, as in a glass, the glory of the Lord, are changed into the same image, glory to glory, even as by the Spirit of the Lord. This is saying that we are changed into the Lord. We're not going to change the Lord. We're not going to change his doctrine. We're not going to change his will. We're not going to change his direction. He makes the direction. And what he wants us to realize is he wants the same here, 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 wherever the body is, he has the same direction and the same will. There might be different upbringings, different styles, different fashions or whatnot, but there is only his will and what he wants for us. And we always have to remember to come back to what the Word of God is telling us. It doesn't matter what's hanging on the wall or what colors the walls are painted or uh, how high the steeple is, how many people are there, or how many people aren't there, what the pews look like or who the pastor is for that matter. It's the spirit that's moving through the man and also through the building and with the people. Most of all, the body is the people. And we have to worry and concern ourselves with ourselves, not the world of worry out there but only the things that God wants us to contend with. All those things are in his word. And the first thing he wants us to know is not to stress out about it, just repent. And when we say repent, this doesn't mean we gloam and feel bad about all the things we've ever done. We simply decide to do better and change. Do better and change. Repent means change your mind. Change your mind. Just as Jesus said, well, I hold nothing against you either. Go about your way and sin no more. It starts over fresh with the Lord every day. Every day, he renews us. He renews us in our hearts, our minds, our wills, and our emotions. We harbor the past with things. We hold on to things. We hold on to conversations with people. We hold on to that, oh, well, that really upset me. You're not there anymore. And the minute that you don't, even if you're there right now, the minute you say, I'm not here anymore, I'm not going to do that anymore, I'm drawing the line in the sand, Lord, I give it to you, guess what? You can start anew, but it's up to you. You have to make the decision to concern yourself with what God wants you to do and stop with the worries of the world, other people, and what surrounds you. Folks, the spirit of Antichrist, ever since Jesus came, has been in the world. And so long as the world has been going, every generation has something rise up with the spirit of Antichrist. Every generation was expecting it, but we can keep pushing it back. For if the prayers of the righteous avail much, then the son of perdition may not come. Lord, we ask that he may not come. We ask for there to be further generations for my children, my children's children, my children's children's children. We ask that the message keep going on of deliverance and spiritual warfare, that we take out the actions of the enemy in Jesus' mighty name. There has to be a final end to it all, but it doesn't have to be in any victory or lifting to the enemy, Lord. We want it to be lifting you up. We want our testimony, the word of our testimony, to be what knocks down the enemy wherever we go in Jesus' mighty name. You see, go into 2 Corinthians 4 right here. Never give up. If that's what it says right here over chapter 4 in my Bible. Never give up. I have it circled and starred over and over again. Never give up. Chapter 4. Verse 1, 2 Corinthians. Therefore, seeing we have in the ministry, as we have received mercy, we faint not. Do not give up. You might just be on the verge of victory. But 
have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty, not walking in craftiness, nor handling the word of God deceitfully. Don't try to kid God. He knows better. Just, just come clean with him. Come clean. You can't hide it. He's watching. He's everywhere. It, you know, what's hidden as secret sin on earth is scandal in heaven. So you might as well just come clean about it because you will have to then or now come clean with yourself now. That doesn't mean you have to preach what your problems are from the mountaintop. You can come clean just with God. As long as you are ready to let go of things and make changes in your life, change your mind. Repent. Repent. Change your mind. Forgive all people and make straight the way of the Lord in Jesus' name. Nor handling the word of God deceitfully, but by manifestation of the truth commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. Lord, right now we just we just commend ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. Let us be right with other people. Let us be right with ourselves. Let us be right in our comings and going in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost. You see, when you choose not to reach out to that person and and, and give them a word about the Lord when you feel it on your heart, when you feel the Lord directing you to speak to somebody, speak to them. You might be the only Bible that they'll ever receive. Because if it be hid, it is hid to them that are lost. You see, it's important. We can't just have our, our faith in God within four walls. It has to go out there like centurions. It has to go out there in person. It has to go out there in truth in faithfulness and in the hope of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? 4, 4, 2 Corinthians 4, 4, in whom the God of this world hath binded the minds of them which believe not. First of all, this is a small g, God, demigod, little God, an interloper. We're talking about Satan, a little nothing. That's what he is. And you just tell him, get thou behind me, little God of this world that hath binded the minds of the men that believe not. Well, we believe. We believe that makes us overcomers, and he's already lost us. The biggest thing the devil doesn't want you to know is that we've already won. Right underneath that, he doesn't want you to know his presence. And right after that, he wants you to feel defeated. All they got is their mouth. They have their mouth and their money. But what can man take from us? For we are eternal in Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. Amen. Bless the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should, dine, should shine unto them. You see, if, if, if we aren't speaking this out, then it's not going to shine out to everybody else. We have to shine. We have to put out the image of Christ. In us is the image of Christ, the invisible God, which shines out to all men. So when we stay silent, then they're not going to hear from God. We have to be part of the solution, not the problem. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, Lord, let us be part of the solution and not the problem. Let us be your battle axe, your sword, where you place us in life. Let us go forward for your will and your purpose in Jesus' mighty name. 4-5, for we preach not ourselves but Christ, Jesus who is Lord, and ourselves your servant for Jesus' sake. It is not for our sake. It's not really for your sake. It's for the sake of our Lord Jesus Christ who gave his all in all that we be his all in all, that we can be presented clean, that we can be presented worthy, that we can be presented in love to the Father. He is the intercessor. The Father is not looking at our sins. Jesus is taking the blunt of everything for us. He feels what we do. He feels what we do like a like a father. Do you ever have a you ever had a child? I remember the first time my child made a faux pas and she she lied to me about something so simple and it, I felt it right here. That was the first time I really related with how our heavenly Father must feel when we just do things. We just do things. And I thought, wow, she didn't even have to do that. She didn't have to say that and she did. And I was able to talk to her about that and make her understand, and make her understand. But it takes the wisdom of a father to make a child understand why it's not right to do that. And now she's a good girl, you see, because we come into this world flawed. We come into this world of wickedness. We come into this world of fear, unfounded fears. And we have lies and things that we do without even meaning or without even purpose. Sometimes it's just a matter of fear because you don't want to let someone down. So, Father, we just ask if there's any burden binding where people listening might have somebody out there who they're afraid to let them down or do the wrong thing. Lord, we just break all that burden binding and ungodly soul ties. We ask for any fragmentation soul, soul to go back to 
original condition of both parties or all parties involved in Jesus' mighty name. We ask that you set our clock for us, that you set our time, that you set our relationship and our conversations with others in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. 4 6. For God who commanded the light to shine out of the darkness hath shined in our hearts to give light of knowledge of the glory of Jesus Christ, of our God in the face of Jesus. You see, we can't come short of this duty. It is a duty, and that's why there is um, the end of the end of the scriptures of the uh, uh, of the Gospels. It, it it all indicates the Great Commission. There's a Great Commission, and it's to go forth into the world, preaching Jesus Christ and the good news unto all things. All things. It's not just people. It's everywhere. Proclaim the Lord wherever you go, and watch. I guess watch the room light up. Watch the plants grow. Watch everything change. Watch the attitude change from the time you go in a store to the time you come out. If you just put put it out there, put those prayers out there and pray for people. Pray for the joy of the Lord to hit those folks. Pray for the salvation to wash the rooms that you're in, the places you go through. It makes a difference in your life. It makes a difference in their life. It makes a difference in all of our lives. Be that difference. Be that difference in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Going to 4, seven, 2 Corinthians 4, 7. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels, that the, that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. This I see, I say none of these things to blow anybody up, give anybody a big head. I just simply want everyone to fully understand their authority. The biggest thing in spiritual warfare that I see is the doubt and disbelief in people not understanding their own God-given authority. It is not given by me. It is not given by anybody else. But the Father, to the Son, who grants it upon us from his request, he is the intercessor. Go to Jesus for all your needs. I am just a man. I have been placed in this position to bring forth, preserve the word of God, and to guide. But he's the man. He's the man to go to about all your plans. And he's the man to take with all your problems. And he has all the answers for you right here, or he'll show you in your heart. So here and we are in 4.8. We are troubled on every side yet not distressed. He does not want you distressed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. He does not want us in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken, for he will never leave you nor forsake you. Cast down, but not destroyed. We hit the ground and skin our knees a lot of times just to toughen up. And the Lord will do that so that we can do it until we just get up, dust ourselves off, and keep going. See, children cry about things when they fall down, but adults just pick themselves up and say, I'm all right, I'm going to be all right. He wants us to grow. He wants us to grow in Christ. He wants us off the milk of his word. He wants us in the meat of his word and the truth of the path that he has set for each and every one of us in all of our lives. Amen. Here we are, 410. Always being about in the body, the dying of the Lord Jesus Christ, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our bodies, that the life of the Lord Jesus Christ be manifest in our bodies. There's no joke. This is He is saying he doesn't just want our spirit. He wants our mind, will, and emotions down to our flesh and outside. He wants us to shine on his behalf. He wants us to just be in him, through him, and for him in all ways. Give yourself over to the Lord Jesus Christ. There's so many things in our life that we try to hold on to our comfort zones. He wants us in his comfort zone. Amen. Always bearing about in the body and dying of the Lord Jesus Christ. You see, we have to die to ourselves. We're dying to ourselves. And that's the hardest thing to do. You know, the Lord wants us to put away so many things about our, our tudes, our little attitudes, or our little thoughts, or our comments, or our scuffing around about this. And, you know, when we find ourselves picking about that person, this problem, and all these things going on, it's really issues within ourselves that we have to bring forth to the Lord. You know, other people do things, but we have to start with us. We have ought with a brother. We have to make it right. If we if we make a spectacle of ourselves, then we lose. You know, you can you can uh, come about something for the right reasons and handle it the wrong way, and then you end up being the person that owes the apology. Don't let it happen to you, people. Be right in the Lord and right in your comings and goings, and He will set your words, your direction. All right, and let's just wrap it up here in thirteen. We have in the same spirit of faith, according as is written, I believe, and therefore have I spoken. 
we also believe and therefore speak, knowing that he is raised up, the Lord Jesus shall rise up also by Jesus and shall present us with you. For all things are for your sake, that the abundant grace might through the thanksgiving of many redound, redound to the glory of God. See how he's doing this? He wants, he wants Jesus to circulate through us that we circulate through Jesus, so that he can circulate Jesus through us, so that we can circulate through Jesus into the world, so the world can circulate and reciprocate. The more we do, the more it adds to it. It's, and then when we get to heaven, we find that what we've brought is a final final call to the heavenlies where there's the great marriage and coming together. We'll have the, the sheep off to the right. We'll have the goats off to the left. The goats will be cast away. And then we will learn from the Father. There will be the great marriage. And we'll find that we have earned crowns and, and, and we have also earned our heavenly places. But most of all, we, we get that privilege there to help start recirculating because we'll take our crowns off and we'll cast them before Jesus' feet. And then he'll take all the crowns and he'll hand them to the Father. And the Father will place them back upon Jesus because that is the reciprocation of love. He wants us to all be part of that big fractal. He wants us to all be part of what the Father is doing. He wants us to all take part in the great marriage. And we all have to do that by starting here, by picking up our pieces, putting them together, and being the whole that the Lord Jesus Christ wants, requires, and expects of us. Go out there and be good Bereans, good, be good Christians, and uh, follow what the Lord's telling you to do in your heart. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, be blessed. Amen. Amen.